I'm here today with Jonah of uh, Pyramids to talk about the new record, Bloodlines, out right now on AFM Records. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time today to chat about this album. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, and thank you so much for having me. Well, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. So let me start off by asking you this. Coming into this album, did, did you guys know what you wanted out of this record, or maybe did you guys know what you didn't want out of this record? Um, well, I think we were coming, you know, fresh off the heels of the Epitaph album. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like the Bloodlines album is kind of a natural continuation of what we were doing on the Epitaph album. So, um, it, I feel like at this point when we go into the studio or when we're in the creative process, that we're really just kind of doing our thing and we know what to expect from each other. So... Um, not not super planned out. We just kind of roll with it. I I found this album uh, when when I compare it with Epitaph, I, I found this album to have more of a um a compressed design to have more of a a feel of of direction because also the length of this album is shorter than what Epitaph was. So there's less room for you to wonder, and there's more of a sense of of going from point A to point B. Uh, do you see this album being a little bit more streamlined when you compare with the previous record? Um, yeah, I mean, I can see what you mean, too. Like, this is a little tighter of a package, I would say, um, especially in the way that it's bookended. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never, I never really thought of Epitaph as too long of an album, necessarily. We do cover a lot of ground with it, so I could see how, um, as a listener, that it might be overkill at some time at some points yeah th this not to say that it was overkill but i just felt like this album didn't i mean i'm trying to find the right word to describe the experience i just i, I just felt like this record was a little bit more to the point it, it didn't it didn't uh, allow you uh, it didn't allow the loser to kind of lose track of where we were where we we're going and how we're going to get there this album kind of showed us the path almost immediately from that first track all the way to the last song. E even though maybe perhaps this was not something that was done on purpose, uh, was this an organic result of how you guys approached the creative process? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, definitely. Um, we did end up cutting one song, which is something that I don't know if we've really done before, actually, because we've always been so happy with everything. But there was just one song where... We couldn't get the vocal melodies quite right for somehow. Um, so I wonder if we had had that extra song, if then that would have made it seem less congruent. Um, it's funny because I feel like with our finished products that we have, um, it seems as though we go in on a mission and that we're very intentional about how, how we do everything. But we really are just making music that is true to ourselves and that we enjoy making. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's just more kind of happenstance. Um, and I'm, you know, like our album just came out uh, three days ago on Friday. And so, you know, the reactions are coming in and reviews are coming in. And uh, it seems very positive so far. So that's good because I'm always like, well, I hope people like it because this is what we did, you know. Are are you still nervous when it comes to that? When it comes to this time of of release and and now you know fans get to hear the whole thing and not just the singles. Do you still get a little bit nervous in terms of what the overall uh, perspective is going to be and what the feedback is going to be? Um, I mean, this time around, I I felt a touch of anxiety just because there's less guitar solos, or I was worried that people might think the album was too short or something like that. Like there was things to, you know, that you could complain about or nitpick about or whatever. But like, I mean, to me, it's just we've delivered this kind of very pure maze, kind of straightforward album that exemplifies where we're at. Everything so, you just mentioned are pretty much the things that I love the most about this record. Oh, well, that's good. I did watch <laughs> your review, by the way. It's just funny that the things you were worried about is what really worked for me. So it's right. It's, it's just um, it's always interesting to see because everybody obviously is going to have their own opinion and everybody's going to have their own take. But um, coming from Epitaph to this album, I definitely felt like this record was more 
my speed. Um, a, a lot had to do with the keyboard sound. I, I really enjoyed the keyboard sound on this record, and I felt like a lot of bands these days are are allowing the keyboards to be the be all and end all of the soundscape. And I felt like on this record, you guys walked that fine line of of having the keyboards play a role, but not be the indicator of what every single track was going to be. Uh, was that conscious on your end? I think that was more that was more of a post production thing. Um, you know, when Jakob is mixing, he's thinking about the songs, you know, like taking each part of the song and it's like, well, should the keyboards shine more here or should the guitars and drums or the vocals or whatever, um, whatever makes the music the best that it can be. And, um, I was hanging out with him in Europe, um, a month ago or something like that. And, and I said to him, I was like, Hey, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't. I didn't have any mix notes for you. It was like, you mix the album. And I was like, cool, great. You know? And he was like, I really appreciate your trust in me professionally. And I feel like that's just kind of where we're at now. It's like, um, we know what to expect from each other. And, you know, with him sort of doing the mixing and his expertise and all of his experience and know-how, um, we're going to end up with an album where, everyone kind of gets their chance to shine like you're saying and it's not just all, all keyboards or all this that or the other and it makes for um you know a complete album really are, are you guys lucky and fortunate to have someone like Jakob Hansen not only producing and mixing the record but also then be a member of the band does that give you guys a little bit of a, a leg up uh, on everybody else yeah oh we're incredibly lucky to have him in the band um But yeah, we're like, we're so self-contained that, you know, we always joke about we could we could make an album every three months if we wanted to, but I think people would get sick of us. <laughs> but um, like just with our efficiency and the way that we're able to, um, you know, work pyramids in around everything else that we have going on in our lives makes it work really well. And a lot of that has to do with, a you know, like that, that self-contained thing where you have someone like Jakob in the band who is so proficient and prolific at everything that he does guitar playing songwriting producing mixing mastering so yeah we're we love him we're so grateful he, he's, he's definitely got the Midas touch because everything he touches it always turns out absolutely phenomenal but i have to kind of put you on the spot here is he a producer that plays guitar or is he a guitar player that produces wow Um, I think that because producing is his career and his source of income and what he does primarily, if I had to choose one, I would say a producer that plays guitar, but he's a really great guitar player and he's a really great songwriter, obviously. So the guy has too much talent. He needs to share a little bit of that with the rest of the world. <laughs> guys yeah. have none. So like, you know what I mean? Like he's kind of hogging. You got my percentage. Um, well, if everyone is talented, then it wouldn't be so special, right? That's <laughs> true, too. Then, yeah, then we wouldn't be talking about him. Yeah, that's true, too. That's that's definitely a, val a valid point on your end. Uh, I, I want to talk about the keyboard sound. We already touched a little bit about it, but I really want to get your, your take on it. Uh, when you come into a record, do you do you see that what that sound is going to be, or do you have a vision for what you want that sound is going to be so that it kind of sets it apart from previous records, but it's still is the band it still is you do you have that kind of idea coming in um every time it's time to make an album and i'm gonna do my keyboard parts or write my songs um i always go into it with kind of a vision of what i want it to be and um actually i've already started writing songs for our next album album eight which probably won't come out for you know at least a couple of years and it's It's just like, as I grow and as I evolve and as I age and my interests change and the things that excite me and that I'm into, um, it really comes through in my work, um, you know, with Pyramids or with any artist that I work with. So I do tend to go into it with, uh, you know, having having a particular vision. And, do, um, do, you, do you worry about what the current state is in terms of what the expectation expectations are 
on on a keyboard sound on a on a album like Bloodlines, for example? Th does that affect you at all? No, I don't think so. I'm just I'm just gonna be me. I'm gonna be Jonah, and I'm gonna do my thing, and um, you know, incorporate all of my individual influences. And I think that it makes way more sense to, um, to be proud of that sense of sense of individualism instead of just trying to, you know, emulate another keyboardist or or whatever. I mean, all my musical influences are film composers, and I think that really shines through in what I do. And and I I feel like I keep getting better at what I do too. And I hope that um, people are noticing, and that it's making the music better too. Is your evolution as a musician uh, directly connected with the evolution of the band from, from record to record? I mean, there's probably a correlation, but I think it's, you know, there's a lot of out outside influences too. I mean, I remember when we recorded Melancholy Beast in 2003, all those years ago, 20 years ago or whatever, um, over 20 years ago, geez, I was listening to a lot of, you know, Euro power metal and, you know, it's really influenced by like Sonata Arctica and Stradivarius and Children of Bodom and stuff like that. Um, and then with the Bone Carver album, you could start to hear that I was listening to more and more film score music and it's sort of grown that way. And there's like the timeline with all seven albums where it's getting like more and more cinematic, I think. Is that something that you see continue going forward? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, the stuff that I'm writing now for our next album is like, it sounds like a superhero movie or something. This one, and I always, I like to quote this one guy who who made a comment on one of our music videos or something like that. And he said, why does Jonah Weingarten have to make everything sound like a Michael Bay movie? <laughs> and he and he meant it as an insult, but I was, I, like, I was just going to ask you, was that, was that, because to me it doesn't sound like an insult, but, but I guess no. he meant it as such. He meant it as such, but I took it as I was like, oh, this guy gets me, you know? <laughs> yes. I think I it backfired. Back, it backfired on him. Like here he is thinking that he's putting you down. Meanwhile, he's lifting you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love how you turn that negative into a I, I honestly, if I had read that in the comment section, I actually, I would give it a thumbs up because I would think like, wow, fuck, this guy knows what he's talking about. But It just right. goes to show you, never read the internet comments. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Try to stay um, But yeah, like the stuff I'm doing now, it's just, you know, it could, it could fit in with a, like a movie trailer for something or, you know, a superhero movie or a war movie. Uh, I'm actually on a war movie kick right now and I'm watching some series too, like the Pacific and Band of Brothers. And so that's, you know, influencing the stuff that I'm writing big time. And when you're creating this sound, because once again, going back into this record, I, I thought that th that that line of introducing the keyboard sound in a way that enhances the guitars, that enhances the drums was so well put together that it allowed me as a listener to really feel like everybody had their 15 minutes of fame, if you will. Uh, how do you move that forward, creating a cinematic atmosphere and still giving then the drums and guitars the room that they need to breathe? Is Is that challenging? Um, well, with the, the songs that I'm writing are keyboards and orchestration first, and then they're taking my material and writing drum and guitar parts and vocals on top of that. So, um, and then, you know, when Jakob is writing songs, it's the reverse, it's guitars and drums, and they send that my way and I add my keyboards and everything. So it just like somehow it just works. It's like they just know what I want and what I'm kind of going for in my head. Um, and Again, it comes back to that trust and that confidence in each other and everything that we do. And you have an end product that sounds like just very well balanced, like you're saying. And talk about movie scores. I thought that Wolves of the Sea was definitely a movie score style track on this album. How was that song from the early stages to like the final result? Was it a difficult song to put together? No, um, I just, uh, Jakob actually sent me a mail and said, hey, how would you feel about doing like some kind of epic um, instrumental outro type track? And I was like, 
give me give me a minute I'll, I'll be right back and so i just went and composed it on the spot in the studio it's, yeah it's such a key i i think this album has two really important songs that define the design, that define the flow. And that is Alliance that breaks the record. It's a, it's a duet. It's a completely different song. And then Wolves of the Sea is a critical track as well in order for you to have a sense of finality as far as the experience is concerned. When you guys were putting the track listing, did you look at these two songs with, with those two specific roles in mind? Yeah, well, it seemed, it seemed to make sense when we're figuring out the track listing to put Alliance in the middle of the album to like kind of give the listener a breather. And then the Wolves of the Sea, it's like an end credit song in a movie. And it works great. You know, and then of course the opening credits is the is the title track, Bloodlines. But um fun fact, so the Wolves of the Sea, I was watching a documentary about orca whales. And that's what they call orca whales. That's one thing they call them is the wolves of the sea. So it's yeah, it's orca whales. That's so what it's a reference to. That's what inspired it? Yeah. Wow. In, super interesting. Uh, in Alliance, the duet with Melissa Bonney, uh, w was her name in the running for that song uh, to be part of that duet from the get-go? Or did you guys just feel like that song was really meant to be a duet and then you just try to figure out who would be the best person to fit in that role? I wrote that song with Melissa in mind because I asked her first before I even wrote the song if she would be willing to sing on her album and do a duet. And she said yes. So. Um, yeah, so that was the the process. That was the order of things there. She's a lovely person, and I was very happy to see her on that duet because I thought you guys delivered. What a powerful song! What a powerful performance! Uh, it, it's, yeah. a, it's a unique track that really sets itself, and no surprise you guys picked it as one of the singles. Yeah, um, Melissa is a beautiful human being, inside and out, and so talented. And like she really just helped bring the entire record to a whole other level. Um, with just her performance on that one song. So we're all very grateful that she was willing to do it. She she seems to be uh, just somebody who, I mean, I've talked to her. I've, I've We've known each other for a very long time. And I, I've kind of seen her growth uh, with every project, with every band that she has on. And she seems to be one of those singers that when you think maybe perhaps she's reached her, her plateau or she's reached her top, she always finds a way of pushing herself forward and pushing herself even higher. And I thought with this track with you guys, uh, she was just the perfect spice. She was just the perfect add-on in order to bring that song to life. Not just the song as a, as a track, but also the emotion that the, that track carries in the sound and then in the lyrical content as well. Yeah. And I think it's nice, too, to just inject a little bit of uh, you know feminine energy into our stuff because it's so just you know, epic and powerful all the time. So it need it needs a it needs a woman's touch, as they say. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with you on that. Uh I have to ask you this tough question because every band when, when they release a new record, it's always their best record to date. Now I actually feel like this is the best record to date. Uh but in your mind, what does make what does uh Bloodlines have that makes it the best album that the band has ever released? I mean, based on everything you're saying, it makes sense to me that you feel that this is our best album, certainly. Um, I don't know if it is or not. All I can tell you is that I feel like we've really hit our stride um, between Epitaph and now this. Like, we've really kind of formed what our sound is. I, ho I hope that's not avoiding your question too much, but... No, I was going to... I honestly thought you were going to say this is not my favorite album from the band, and I would be like, what? You got to be the first guy that releases an album and doesn't think this album is their best album to date. Um Yeah, I'm not sure. It's interesting. Like I just don't I don't think it is and I don't think it isn't. I just sort of see it as more of like a flow, like a continuation of what we're doing and where we're heading and maybe our next album will be our best album ever. Do you also think that sometimes you need time in order for the records to kind of have their own life, their own span, and then maybe you can look back and evaluate that, but maybe three years down the road, four years down the road, do you think a lot of albums need that time to breathe? Yeah, I think so. And of course, um, you know, I want to see what people think and what people say, because um, that, that can sway my opinion one way or the other. There's just, 
like on the epitaph album we just had like some songs on there that are just awesome you know they're so unique and really stand alone um like the time traveler and um the transcendent song that we did with britney slays on the last album but then i think there are songs like that on this album too like alliance and actually my favorite song on the album is uh taking what's mine if i had to choose Pick one, one. Yeah, I, I from talking to you, I'm getting the feeling that Epitaph is your pay favorite album. I, I'm just getting that feeling. For me, definitely Bloodlines is my favorite record. And I think from my point of view, I'm looking at it more as the complete body of work. I, I feel like this album as a complete body of work, if I'm listening to this record from front to back, this is an, a record that's easy for me, not just to enjoy it, but when I get to that end credits, like you called it, I'm ready to go back again and listen to it all over again. It has that more of a playability. I think because of the length of Epitaph, it's an album that requires me to step away from it a little bit more before I can go back to it again. But maybe it's just me. Like, uh, you know, it's just my own perce perception of the album. You perhaps Yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, that makes sense. It's sort of like the rewatchability of, you know, like a movie. Like, you know, when you go to a movie in a theater and and you see it and you're like, oh, that was good. I liked it. But then in your mind, you're like, do I really want to watch that again ever? Like, am I ever going to see that movie again? Probably not. You know, I kind of felt that way when I saw The Flash last week. Um, I was like, oh, I liked that. But yeah, like, you know, I'm never going to watch it again, probably. <laughs> but uh, I'm know. not saying I'm never going to listen to Epitaph again. So I don't want you to get that idea. I'm, I'm For me, I would put it more in the category of Inception, which is a movie that I absolutely love. But there's no way I could watch that movie back to back. I definitely would need to take a little bit of time before I watch it again because I, I would feel like just my brain cannot take it. It's just too much for me to absorb at one time. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, yeah, so then maybe Bloodlines is like, uh, you know, Forrest Gump or Groundhog Day or Happy Gilmore <laughs> or something, you know, where you just want to keep watching it. Well, man, you're really selling yourself short with all of those. I mean, maybe Forrest Gump is the one that stands out of all of those that you just mentioned in, <laughs> in terms of uh, being one of those movies for the ages. Not that the other ones are not good, but I feel like the other ones maybe a little bit more lowbrow. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm maybe. sort of, yeah. And, and, and that's definitely not what this record is. Um, you, you mentioned the continuation from Epitaph. So if you look at this album as a continuation from Epitaph, what did this album do better than Epitaph? Is there certain elements that you can see that this record really elevated in order to take that step forward? Well, I think that it is a bit more focused overall. And um, it's more, yeah, it's more digestible. It's more uh, snack size. <laughs> but like, if you listen to Epitaph and then Bloodlines back to back, it, it, it would sound like, I feel like kind of a fluid. There's a lot of things. Ex yeah. Experience. Uh, th that that I agree with you 100%. Normally, before listening to a new album, I listen to the previous record one more time just before I get into the new album, just to see where the band was and where the band is going. It allows me to maybe better grasp the new record, and I can definitely feel that vibe when I went from Epitaph, listen to it again, and then leading into Bloodline. So I honestly feel like it, it doesn't feel like there was a gap of time there. It was almost like there was a seamless continuation from the creative process of one moving into the creative process of the other. Yeah. I can tell you that I feel like I'm in very uncharted territory as far as um, where a pyramid is at and where I'm at with my career and like the way we sound and what I'm doing. And, and it's like when you go through life, you know, it's like, I just turned 40. Right. And so when you're going through life, everything that you know is based on your experience and what you have in the past. And it's like, if you go through a breakup, it's like, you know that it's going to be okay and that you'll get over it and you'll move on because you've been through that before in your life, you know? And I feel like Pure Maze is this ship that's just always sailing forward in my life. And it's like, okay, album seven. And it's just always, it always feels like uncharted territory, but no matter what happens, I know that on that ship is Jacob Hansen and Morton and Teria and myself. And I know that we're going to be okay and that we'll be able to continue to make great music 
because there's just that belief in each other and that sort of create creative unity that you can only have by making this many albums and having a career this long. Well, the way you describe it, it explains the fact that you were saying earlier about uh, you, you could create more and more and more and more records. You're never going to get tired of it. It just seems like it's such a healthy place to be. Uh, and it gives you all the tools that you need to be who you are as a musician and as an individual. And when you surround yourself with those people and you have the outcomes that you guys do in terms of the quality of the records, why not just keep doing it? So it's just like yeah. there's, no, there's no reason not to. Uh, I, I have one last question for you, and that is as the album now is out, everybody can listen to the songs, everybody can enjoy the record. Uh, what are the next steps for you guys? What are the next plans? Are you guys playing some festivals this summer? Are you planning any touring? Uh, where can fans see you guys? Um, I think next year we'll probably play some more shows and hopefully some festivals and things. Um, we're talking about maybe doing some things in Norway. Uh, but who knows? You know, opportunities present themselves all the time. Um, this summer and probably into the fall, I'm just going to be focusing on writing more material for album eight. So that way I have that done and ready to go. So whenever the other guys are ready to jump in on that, they can. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, time just goes by real fast and it's going to be next year in the blink of an eye. And so, yeah, the summer's already half over. The year's already half over. <laughs> I, I have a feeling like you're one of those guys that you're, you, you just released a record. You're already working on a new record. Halfway through that record, you're already thinking of ideas for the following record. Like your mind never really stops. It doesn't. Um, I actually wrote an entire Pyramid song when I was taking a nap last week. <laughs> and and I, so I woke up from the nap and I was like, oh, that sounded really good. So I went and, um, you know, hopped on my piano and just sort of like, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to do this. And then I went in the studio the next day and recorded it. Wow. So that's my nap, my nap song. And it doesn't sound like a sleepy song. It's like super epic and, you know. You did you remember like every single piece of it? I can't turn my brain off whether I'm awake or when I'm asleep. My brain is just constantly composing epic orchestration. It's just like I'm thinking about chord progressions and rhythmic patterns and French horn lines and staccato string stonatos and choir swells. And it's like sometimes I just want to be able to turn it off. Like, is there an off switch or a mute so that I can be a normal person? But I, I just I can't. So I'm just sort of settled into the fact that this is who I am and what I am. And I'm going to keep doing what I do and sharing uh, this gift, I guess, with the world, you know. Fuck, man. Keep doing what you're doing because it. Uh, I people love it. I love it. Fans love it. So uh, just 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 keep on going. Just don't stop. I promise. Just don't stop. Just keep doing that's my purpose. Maybe, maybe take more naps. If, if that's what you're going to get out of every nap, just take more naps, maybe, you know, one in the middle of the afternoon, like every day, just to recharge the batteries and boom, another song. Then you can have like a record called the nap sessions. And it's all the songs that you dreamt of during your naps. Right. And actually, um, my friend Brian uh, played trombone on the song, too. Wow. So we we recorded him like, you know, 10 layers of trombones and stuff. And it just sounds so awesome. So epic. I can never find a good trombone sound. So it was really cool to have like a live trombonist come in the studio. And he said he wants to do more. So, you know, we'll see. I'm, I really like brass sections. Th that dude from the comment section is going to come back for, uh, for a follow up on that post. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put it on my business cards. Like it'll you know, have my name and then making, making everything sound like a Michael Bay movie since 2003 I, I think yes. that would be the ultimate the ultimate this back to the person who wrote that comment i think that would be amazing maybe even put it on some t-shirts who knows yeah there was another one too so that's that's one of two there was another one where um a guy said that i had the most punchable face since ed sheeran <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, yeah but once again you could look at that as a as a compliment i mean ed sheeran is is a pre pretty popular dude you know Plus, right, for sure. ginger, so he has no soul. So probably if you punched him in the face, he probably wouldn't even feel it. So, I mean, like that's saying a lot. 
<laughs> oh my god, this just took a turn. <laughs> By the way, my cat, my cat Bruce, has been here hanging out for the whole interview. Oh, he's super chill. Out. I I noticed that you're a cat guy because your mug had a bunch of cats on it. So I kind of yeah, it literally I, I, says cat yeah, person I, on the I, handle. I, I kind of got the vibe that you were a you were a cat guy. Uh, exactly. Jonah, man, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. First of all, let me say thank you for commenting on, on my on my video. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to comment. And I want to say thank you for taking the time today to chat with me about the record. Um, you may not say it, but for me, this is the best record you guys have released. I love this album front to back. I, I just think it's a really well put together record. I'm not the kind of guy who just listens to a song here and there. For me, an album has to be an album, and I like to listen to it as an album. And this record just hit all the right spots for me all the way through from start to end. Okay. Well, thank you for saying that. And, um, you know, I will, I will take your words and, you know, consider them also as I'm moving forward, writing new material and stuff for sure. Cause I, you know, respect you and I respect your opinion. And, uh, I like to, I listen to people. I like to listen to outside sources of people that I respect and, um, yeah, and incorporate that into what I'm doing. Uh, it, means, it means the world to me, more than you know, more than you know. Now go take a nap and write another song. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> take care, man. All the best. All right. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, man. Bye. Cheers.